Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's James, I'm a first year medical student and tutor of the GAMSAT. And today I wanted to make another video kind of extending on the last video I made, which was more talking generally about some tips and kind of how I studied for the GAMSAT. And in this one, I kind of want to extend on that a little bit and kind of show you how you could actually apply those tips to your study. So what I'm going to do today is get a practice GAMSAT problem and then look at it and pretend as if I have absolutely no science knowledge, which actually isn't that far from the truth. And then hopefully that will kind of put into a practical sense all of those tips that I was talking about in that last video and give a little bit more meaning to that. And as always, if you find this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like, comment and subscribe. Okay, so what we have here is a practice question that I have made, which I've modeled off some organic chemistry questions that I've seen and kind of using uh, some of the, the common skills that I see in this kind of question. So uh, it's not, you know, it's not a proper GAMSAT problem, but I think it's okay. And I think it should demonstrate the, the kind of process that I would go through, because remember we're pretending as if I have absolutely no science knowledge whatsoever. So I'm going at it as if I don't know anything and this is how I'd kind of go through. So whenever I see GAMSAT problems, I always um, skip, skip the stem and go to the question because in my opinion, the question kind of acts as a filter. So if you know what you're looking for in the question, you will then be able to kind of filter through the stem and find the relevant parts of it because often the majority of it you don't actually need, so you're just wasting time. And I actually think this is something that they're examining for. So it's really good to get into that habit straight away where you're actually thinking about how to solve the problem rather than, I see a lot of people kind of look through the STEM for information, but that tells me that they're not actually thinking about how to solve the problem. They're more looking for the answer to hopefully jump out of them, which I would say is pretty unlikely to happen. So, <clears throat> so let's go through that process. So we skip through the stem, we know it's organic chemistry, and then we go to the question and we use this as kind of a filter for what we need to do. Now, we will not, if, if, you're, if you're from a non-science background or something like that, uh, you'll, a lot of this will appear foreign and you won't exactly know what, what, what you're doing. But if you kind of just try as much as you can to work out how you would solve the problem and then that will help identify the kind of knowledge gaps that you need to fill so you can actually execute those skills. So for example, in this question it's asking which of the following structures represent the shift base that exists at equilibrium in a solution of propanol and methylamine. So you really and, and actually, probably in retrospect, the GAMSAT wouldn't have these. So let's actually just strike these out. Let's pretend that these aren't here. So, oops, sorry. So let's pretend that those, those parts aren't there because usually the GAMSAT won't give you all of the, the kind of information. So you would be thinking, right, well, it's asking me which of these structures represents the shift base? So let's go to the question and we'll try to figure out what that stuff means. And if you kind of use that as a filter, like I'm suggesting, you'll probably find this part of the question which talks about shift bases. And you can probably, hopefully, when you read that, they're talking about a reaction that forms a shift base for example, when two things react with an amino acid. So without really knowing what, and I guess if I undo that, the sentence I'm talking about here is probably this. That kind of tells you exactly what you need to know. It's saying that we have a reaction, it's detailed below, and this reaction forms the shift base, and that's when a pyridoxal phosphate. So, like you know, I'm, I don't have the chemistry knowledge. I don't actually know what these words mean, but I do have the problem-solving ability. So that should hopefully demonstrate to you that you don't need a high level of chemistry. But hopefully just from the parts I've highlighted, I actually think to yourself if you could come to this conclusion yourself, because I really think you could 
without any science knowledge at all, from this sentence I've highlighted, you can conclude that this thing here is the shift base and these two things here are some kind of pyridoxal phosphate, B6 or whatever, and an amino acid. So you don't know what many of these words mean, but you know that you need this thing on the right and you need two things on the left to form that. And you can kind of see that if you could understand this, you would be able to get the shift base. And presume you could probably assume then, if it's asking for the shift base and it's given you these two molecules as well, you can probably assume that somehow these things are the actual things on the left. And that is what they are. So that's just, you know, just looking at the words, you can actually get a really long way in the question, even though you don't have the skills to actually solve it. So there was a big thing there, you don't have the skills to solve it. So how do you develop those skills? Well, now you need to be looking at these molecules and thinking, okay, how could I actually get an answer? Like how, let's say I knew what this was, or I knew what that was, how would I know what that would form? Well, you need to understand what you're looking at. So maybe you're like, okay, I actually have no idea what any of these letters mean in this molecule. And so then you would go to, let's say Google, and you might type in something like naming and drawing organic, organic compounds. So there'll be heaps of resources. I've actually made a video on um, kind of an overview of organic chemistry as well, which would cover this, but there's heaps of resources out there and you would just, you know, this is the thing that you would study. And once you've studied that, you know, maybe you'd log it on here as well. So naming, so this is just a, a rough spreadsheet that I've made. So naming and drawing um, molecules. So something like that. That's one of your study topics that you need. So you would go away, you would study that, you'd come back to the question and see if that helps you. So now you know that this is an aldehyde and this is the amine group. And then, you know, once you've studied it, and then you would be able to work out that this is propanol, which is prop, so that's three carbon. So you'd have a three carbon uh, aldehyde and methylamine, so a one carbon amine group. And then from that, you'd then be thinking, okay, I've drawn out these compounds. What do these R's mean? And then you'd go to, and you can kind of see what I'm getting at. You're going through that process of just gradually adding on the information that you need, the specific information that you need to actually solve this problem. And I guess why I'm harping on about this so much is that I see a lot of people, they will see a question like this. They'll be like, okay, organic chemistry, here we go and they won't know what to do. So they'll go to Khan Academy, let's say, and watch eight hours of videos and do all these practice questions, but they'll come back and they still won't be able to solve the problem. So I think it's really important that from a very early stage, you're actually looking at the problem because that problem will tell you what uh, science knowledge, background, content, whatever, you actually need to, uh, to understand. And Hopefully, even just by looking at this question, you can realize that it's not a massive amount of, of knowledge. Really, you just need to be able to draw out the molecules and then recognize that these R groups in the compounds are variable, so they will change depending on the molecule, but those are the things that comprise the final product. So really, if you ask me to summarize a chemistry question, this is what I would, this is what I would think of. And that's why I made this question as it is, because that's the key skill is drawing the molecules and then translating that to some kind of reaction. So it doesn't, to do that, you need to know exactly what you're doing rather than doing all this extra chemistry stuff, which isn't helping you actually solve the problem. So make sure the whole time you're letting the questions kind of guide the, the background content that you're studying. And just to go back to our spreadsheet, you'll see here that I've, I've got something here, things to practice. So I think it's really important that you actually practice these skills in a really isolated and controlled manner so you can get better at them. So something that I did was 
I had just paper flashcards. I know that these days you've got things like Anki and Quizlet and all that, but I just used paper flashcards and I wrote on there, draw out an aldehyde, a ketone, an alcohol, whatever. And every week or so I would just bring it out and I would just draw that molecule and it would be, a lot of the times I'd get it wrong, but that built my skill to be able to draw compounds, name compounds and and all of that. So I think it's really important that you keep a kind of log of the things that you need to practice, the skills that you have identified from the practice material that will be helpful for the actual exam. Because ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build skills and build problem solving techniques that will help us on the actual exam. Okay, so let's press on with the other questions just to keep kind of trying to hammer that home. So here we have another question and it's saying, which, what's the following pairs of compound, which of the following pairs of compounds can be used to form this molecule? And then hopefully you'll, you'll start to see that that's similar. It's a similar question, but just in reverse. It's now given us this thing on the right and it wants, the question is asking, what are the things on the left? So hopefully you'll be starting to form this kind of problem solving uh, framework for organic chemistry where you think, okay, I either need to go from the, the reactants to the products or I need to go from the products to reactants. And how I do that is through naming the compounds, drawing the compounds and recognizing what these R groups are and what changes with those various R groups. So you'll start to see similarities between questions and that is what's important to help you build that framework so that you can approach any organic chemistry question. If we go into question three, you know, this is asking, we've now got three molecules, what's the imine functional group? So we need to evaluate all those molecules. So we need to go up here, we need to find what that functional group is. So that will be detailed somewhere in here. And then we need to actually recognize which of these molecules have it. So again, a very similar skill, but slightly different. And then just to close off with this last question, hopefully my face isn't cutting too much of it off, but that's not really too important. It's more just about the process there. You know, if you're looking at this one, it's it's got four statements and now you have to evaluate all of those statements. So this is a slightly different skill. And you might see unfamiliar terms in here. So like primary amine. So that's kind of an uncommon um, structure, I suppose. It's, it's you probably, if you revised functional groups, you would have seen amines, but you probably haven't heard primary, secondary, tertiary, all of that. So that's something that you need to go back to your little list. Um, include primary, secondary, tertiary uh, structures of amines slash alcohols. It's also a very common place where I've seen that primary, secondary structure thing in there. So you've given yourself another study topic. Go away and study that. And then you can come back and evaluate if this statement is correct or not. And you can go through the rest of them and evaluate if they're right or not. And you start to realize the things that they might be including in there. So, um, you know, a lot of these, these other things that you might see, uh, you need to actually go back to the stem and find evidence that supports or doesn't support one of these options. So, uh, one that I included in here was, uh, I mean, formation includes the nu uh, nucleophilic attack of an amine nitrogen on a chiral carbon. So there is, there's some, I've wrote in here, um, this statement here, I'll make a different color so we can see it. So in green here, I've got, uh, the formation of a shift base involves the nucleophilic addition of the amine to the carbonyl carbon. So if you kind of evaluate that against what this is saying, you can see that there's some uh, irregularities there. So that's another kind of skill that you're recognizing that even though it's organic chemistry, you still might need to be kind of evaluating statements and looking for evidence. So ultimately, it's all just about identifying the skills that are required for each question and then working on those skills and just, it'll, it'll take time. When you're first starting off, it'll take time. You'll need to, um, as I've kind of tried to demonstrate here, you might get stuck at, at every step. You might not know what the C is or what these lines are in a molecule or something like that. 
but that's what you're studying and you're building that skill and you're building it in a targeted way. And I promise you, it'll be far more efficient doing it this way than going and doing some kind of online organic chemistry course and coming back because it won't help you. I can, I've done it and I can promise you it won't help. All right, so I hope that was helpful. I, I really think that studying in this way is really effective. If you're using the questions, you're recognizing what information is actually relevant for you to solving the problem. You're not going on some kind of endless rabbit hole of studying scientific theory. You're actually seeing exactly the information that you need to understand. And simultaneously, you're also seeing how the problems are structured and the kind of problem solving techniques that you need to actually get through the question and get to the answer or get to that area where you need to actually execute those skills. So I think it's really, really good to start with the questions early. And when you are practicing those skills, make sure you're doing it a lot and you're doing it in a really controlled way. So it's kind of a two pronged approach where you're working on your problem solving skills, but you're also working on these kind of science skills or math skills or whatever in a really controlled fashion. So when you get there, you'll be able to execute them really well. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any feedback on this, I'd love to hear it and I'd love to hear any other kind of videos that you'd like me to do. Um, and if you liked this video, please uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.